Howdy folks, Jamboriki here. Today, I'm going to be fulfilling a patron requested review of the Danish animated movie, Samson and Sally, based on the book, Song of the Whales, by Danish children's author, Bent Haller. A film about a whale called Samson, who befriends an orphan named Sally. The two go on many adventures together, and eventually fall in love. Unfortunately, their romance is interrupted, when Samson randomly decides to go on a quest to find the legendary Moby Dick, in hopes that his hero can save the whales from their dying ocean. I'll admit that this film's cutesy art style might mislead you into thinking that it's your typical happy fun time kids movie that's all about animals innocently frolicking and getting up to comical mischief, which it sort of is, but Sansom and Sally kind of ends up betraying our expectations by turning out to mainly be a post-apocalypse coming-of-age tale about mankind's destruction of Earth, featuring many disturbing scenes that have reportedly traumatized kids. I can imagine all of this upsetting Western parents, but European animated movies are much less delicate with child audiences compared to Hollywood studios. And I do think it's unfair to demand another culture to cater to the sensitivities of American kids. If anything, the film's dark tone is very much needed for a movie that's setting out to teach children about harsh reality. It would be condescending and even ineffective if the movie sprinkled rainbow glitter on its mature subject while carefully treading eggshells. Are you hurt? Samson and Sally also doesn't follow a conventional story, and has more of a slice of life thing going for it. There's no free act formula, we're just watching Samson and Sally live their lives, and doing their best to survive. I'm sure that this will frustrate those after a typical structured animated film. Personally though, I was very compelled by the direction of this movie. Once I accepted that this movie wasn't what I thought it would be, I found myself invested in its fever dream-like world with its creepy, washed-out atmosphere that borders on the horror genre, coupled with a music score that can be best described as dystopian. The fact that our characters look like they belong in a Saturday morning cartoon really works for me too, because it's like we're watching dark realism seep its way into something safe, innocent, and familiar. A good example of this is when a pair of walruses start a musical number right out of nowhere as they bang on radioactive drums, only to become poisoned by the radiation. This whole scene is like a twisted subversion of a Disney comic relief song. I also found it easy to put myself in the shoes of these whales, as I sympathise with their daily struggle to survive in an ocean where predators lurk under sea, hunters prowl the surface, and dangerous chemicals are everywhere. The thing is though, despite all the horrors that these whales face, they still tried their best to adapt and stick together as a family, even if some members aren't blood related, all making for a strangely optimistic movie for an apocalyptic fable. Poor little Sally. Don't worry, you can stay with us. Heck, Samson mainly keeps his head up thanks to the legend of Moby Dick, as he puts all of his faith into a mythical hero who may or may not actually exist. Sometimes, all some people can do in trying times is hope that someone out there will save them, because it's maybe all they have. But legend has it that one day, Moby Dick will come back again, stronger and wiser than ever, to protect all whales. Does that mean he's alive? The legend of Moby Dick will never die. However, as admirable as Samson's faith in Moby is, the painful truth is that Moby is just too old to protect his fellow whales anymore, leaving Samson all alone as the only one who could protect whale kind. This might seem cold for a coming-of-age lesson, but self-dependence is actually a very vital skill to develop as we grow up. Life can unfairly and unpredictably force us into situations where we have to fend for ourselves, and we can't just ask some superhero to fix everything for us. It can be often down to us to keep things moving forward. You may have noticed I'm not as young as I used to be. But you're coming to help all us whales. That's just an old legend. You must learn to help yourselves, huh? I think that's why I like the ending of this film, in which Samson has his own family now. We're reminded that the world is scary and full of danger, but our loved ones will be there to guide and prepare us. Like I said, this film is strangely optimistic in spite of his end-of-the-world premise. Is he God? It's because I hit him with my tail! <laughs> I'll confess that Moby's lecture on humankind's errors does get a little bit preachy, and I was kind of disappointed that the movie resorted to spelling out its message in the end, especially when, up until this scene, it was doing such a great job at illustrating its point. Mankind is not vicious. Mankind is stupid. 
Someday man will realize what he's doing. By killing everything in the sea, he is killing himself. When the sea is dead, mankind will die too. But I would be lying if I said that this movie didn't reach me after I finished it. When you've spent an hour watching whales suffer from humanity's real life actions in a soul crushing dystopian future that seems possible, it's hard to not be haunted by the movie's environmental message or marinate on Earth's fate unless higher powers start taking action. Is Samson Sally surprisingly dark for a kid's movie? Oh, yes, totally. But some kids like their entertainment to be a little macabre, and appreciate when a movie doesn't baby them. Heck, I've read that many people who grew up with Samson and Sally enjoyed it because it was so dark. If you go into this movie knowing what it is, then you might end up appreciating it just as much as I did. If you'd like to make your own Patreon request to review, then become a $10 plus patron at my Patreon page today. I've been Jambariki, feel free to like, share and subscribe. Cheerio folks.